From the home offices of Ash and Flow, this is Unbillable Hours, a podcast about professional services marketing. Stick around and listen to our insights, tips, and best practices to improve your firm's marketing and even your career. So welcome, everybody, to, to this new episode of the Unbillable Hours podcast. Welcome to 2022, right? No, because we have the the Kira podcast. Oh right, for them. But... <laughs> okay, so you can take it from the beginning. You can cut all this. Yeah, and yeah. it's just the two of us, Ash. Right today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a bunch of burning platform questions that you've been getting flow from people, and um, <laughs> things that I also have to deal with on a day to day basis. And we figured that this is a time to tell our listeners, hey. We are yeah. actually listening. Yeah. So you, you, you guys cannot, while listening to this, if it's true, like it's the beginning of the year, right? If you're good and or lucky, you have your marketing plan done and signed off and you have your budgets and so forth. And now it's the question of how do we take what we have? It's usually somewhat high level, right? And and how do we execute it and how do we get into this mode of actually, pro- yeah, well, producing and publishing content, right? That's that's what it comes down to, what you're saying. Yeah, and if you're super lucky, you're actually, <clears throat> given the fact that lots of places have already begun their fiscal year, you might have produced your first piece of like thought leadership or first piece of major content already. Yeah. And you've done the first cycle of promotions. And now you're like, God, do I have to create something new? Can I just reuse what I've got? What should we do? And we've got a number of ways to address this, but you also have got more points here. The reason we wanted to talk to you about that is that, you know, it's just an observation from anybody who's worked in a bigger firm or multi practice setting or a setting where there's probably even multiple markets, right? It's just a fact of life that marketing plans or planning tends to take up a lot of time and effort. Um, a lot of stuff gets done, and then plans get built, and they're actually fairly high level they're often very concentrated on resource allocation right who gets how much budget and what do they do with it at what point in time that sort of thing but because of that they're often also pretty high level and for lack of a better word somewhat content free to to an extent which means then that they actually are not very helpful for execution as you as you get into it and as, as the year progresses and i think we've all been there and we've all seen it that the plan you spend so many weeks sometimes months right building sort of goes out the window two to three months into the year right for whatever reasons and while a that's to be expected and b you know that's in a way also okay because the plan is not reality we often do get questions around is there any trick is there something you could do to get a marketing year or or, a year's worth of execution that's actually close more closely aligned to what you've planned uh, in the beginning and the answer to that is yes and we wanted to share some of the, the steps and the practices with you today but maybe first let's let's take a look at a couple of reasons for why um for why uh, marketing plans can sort of go go haywire or go go rudderless for for lack of a better word right there is a book out and i'll put it in the show notes by by three folks, Peter Mahoney, Scott Tadaro, and Dan Fort, which I can recommend people take a look at. It's called The Next CMO, right? (laughs) Ambitious title. Uh, Subtitle is a guide to operational marketing excellence. And in that book, the authors discuss the reasons for why marketing plans go go rudderless throughout the year. I'm just going to quote a little bit from it. It says, typically five primary reasons for why marketers run rudderless activities, right? or do not follow the plan, right? And these are one, the plan was built at the beginning of the year and it wasn't detailed enough. I think that's the reason I've encountered most often. It's not been detailed enough for the team to use as a guide for their efforts, right? Two, the team never fully understood how the strategy fit with their function, so they defaulted to what they know how to do instead of doing what aligns with the goals and strategy in the plan. I haven't seen them too much of that, but yeah, I could see how that happens. And then third reason, plan was solid, but it resides in a presentation deck somewhere, never to be seen again. I have definitely seen that happen, right? Where planning is done for planning's sake and then stuff doesn't get communicated and managed. Often happens in, in teams which are slightly understaffed so there's no one 
there who makes it their full-time job to actually sort of do project management and drive things, right? Um, and then number four is each member or unit of a writer team built his or her own plan and those were never integrated across the functions. Yep, I've seen that as well. Could can It's easy to happen if you have very complex organizations. And then reason number five is there wasn't a plan in the first place, which which I'll, we'll just presume, yeah, right, it's not the case for the listeners here, right? They have plans. So the question is, how do we avoid some of these other issues and get um, into uh, a form of execution that, that actually drives the results? So like, look, we wanted to talk about the co- a content production process today. And I should be clear that that, I think, excludes some of the other things we all have to do, like, for example, planning and preparing events. It might help with that a little bit, but it's, that, this is sort of separate. My, my point is that I think it doesn't help if you treat content production as a project, which is, I've seen that done in the past. You mentioned thought leadership, right? A yeah. thought leadership project is, that's like a project. Like you, you do the research, you write the thing, someone plans a campaign on top of it. Some people sit down and create the, the content pieces or the assets. It's, it's done in a project fashion. In my experience, that's a bit, that's a bit too slow and a bit too, it's, it's just too painful. It's cumbersome, really. It's cumbersome. Yeah. And, and if you have several of those, that means you like have just an endless number of projects. You have to switch between those and so forth. So, which is why I think our recommendation is to maybe opt for a, a continuous process instead where you do something that's very repeatable and that helps you break your big pieces down into smaller things, which you could publish right away. Right. Yeah. I mean, when you think about it, like it's, it's good to like think about first of all what are the key moments of the year the key beats of the year where you actually need to have some sort of content so let's let's start I'll start with the angle where you yeah. already have some content created yeah that could be multi-purpose for various things so let's look at it like first look at all the key beats of the year where you already know you've got things to say you already have content that where you have things to say so repurpose your material add a few taglines and stuff to match those key beats, and then get ready to push out your existing content at those times, and people will totally be fine. It's basically repackaging what you already got. That's the first thing. The other thing is what a former guest of our show and I came up with, which is basically called planned reactive content. Maybe Maybe you are in the chemical industry, and suddenly people need to talk about like emissions or hydrocarbons or something like that and you've got like a point of view about it you're ready because and all of this probably stems up from some leak somewhere or some price fluctuation so you've got a point of view you can push it out you can add a few taglines this is your planned reactive if you keep like a calendar of like the moments and also keep a sub calendar where you have like planned reactive content prepared then you're ready to push out content depending upon the time of year and you do not need to create new new net new kind of things you just need yeah. to create repackage what you've got that's that's the planned kind of way that's kind of that's sort of step one and i think it's that's probably the i think that is something you can do once every six months or something build this like you you described the skeleton calendar of mm-hmm. the stuff you can all you can clearly see coming yeah. Like we will not be surprised that by the end of 2022, there's going to be Christmas, right? So you can, st- you can stencil <laughs> that in right away. Oh, knock on wood, unless you know Omicron and all that bullshit. But let's let's presume it, it'll happen. So, and then what? My recommendation, following on what you just said, is again, and this is where it gets from from planning and projects into process. I would suggest that uh, you have on top of your plan also have processes or cadences, right? that help with execution. And these are essentially meetings, right? Let's keep it simple. Throughout the year, and and I think in my experience, what works pretty well is to have three of those, right? Establish three series of meetings that help A, add the necessary detail to the plan, B, ensure everybody understands it, and then C, to sort of translate the overall plan into activities a team can actually deliver against uh, week by week and something that's not in the issues planning we are just quoted from but which our process also serves for is our cadences also ensure that you always have the the best subject matter ex- expert input 
to your ongoing marketing activities, right? That's the idea. So how do you do this? Or, or what's the what's the cadences here? Simply put, you know, start the year by, by setting up three cadences of meetings. First cadence is 90-day quarterlies, right? with uh, practice leaders, business development, wh- whoever your business counterpart is. Those will be used to essentially review the market, the overall marketing plan, right? And then define key objectives out of that plan for the upcoming quarter. Uh, so it's good to have those at the beginning of the quarter, right? Needless to say, uh, you, you take a, like, a bit of a look at, at any issues you expect, right? As you deliver against these objectives, and then you define sort of key uh, work streams or sprints or whatever your thing is, for efforts to do in, in the project, and, and you assign responsibility for them. Also helpful to identify the subject matter experts who from within the business who will be helping marketing with driving those efforts, primarily through through content creation, right? Because we need the expertise for those efforts. Doesn't work the other way. So that's the first cadence. Quarterly meetings, right? You need, as the word indicates, four of those throughout the year with business leadership. And you use them to to break down the marketing plan into stuff that needs to happen in a quarter. Second cadence is bi-weekly insight sessions, right? With these SMEs that help you with your marketing efforts. That is not so much for keeping the plan on track as it is for collecting insights. So we as the marketing team can come up with the content we need for our events, our blog series, the thought leadership efforts and so forth. The point here is to get out of a sort of project mode of producing stuff and into a regular cadence where you get new ideas new topics new for lack of a better word ammunition for for your marketing efforts every other week right from the smes you work with and uh, now to be clear this this can be quite a lot of meetings right i'm not talking your team having one meeting every other week with one sme or so but but if you work for four practices and each of those has I don't know, two major campaigns coming up or two two major work streams for you, then that's four times two bi-weekly meetings. So it's a bunch of them. But the idea is that you get together with the SMEs regularly and you essentially interview them almost sort of podcast style to get insights out of them, which you can use as inputs to your content production processes. Which also means, and let's be clear about that, that you have to prepare those meetings and and um, then guide the SMEs through it, and you record that, and you have outcomes your content, so to speak. This is um, a very good solve in my experience for the, the the issue that marketing plans are so often a bit light on content, right? You you have some topics defined right throughout the year, or maybe you even have some headlines in the editorial calendar. But what actually, right? Time comes around to write that article about um, supply chain solutions in the chemicals industry. What's, what's going to be in there? What are the ideas, right? And if you have these regular bi-weekly sessions with SMEs, you always, almost always have an answer to that, especially if you plan them, right, in alignment with the uh, year-long marketing plan. And then again, with the backup you have or the more detailed input you get from the, from the qualities. So that was the second cadence, meeting cadence you might want to have for you know, getting some more traction. The last one then is the weekly editorial meeting. Now we have our highlight objectives for the quarter, right? From the quarterly, we have lots of content input from the bi-weeklies. Now we can sit down and decide who on the team does what, writes what, films what, you know, publishes what for the week. And you can structure those pretty much, I don't know, any way you like. I usually start off with a review of the quarterly inputs and, and a sort of a bit of a short project review. And we line up the stuff we have to be working on and discuss that. And then it gets into an editorial discussion because we can look into the insights, the material we've, we've gotten from our SMEs, right? What did we learn about the supply chain thing in the chemicals industry? What's most interesting here? What would make for a great blog post? What's probably a good LinkedIn post series and all these types of things. So, and I find that between these three types of meetings, you can actually build quite a bit of traction because you just get into a habit of reviewing the plan together, right? With multiple stakeholders regularly, bringing that into content creation efforts, which are on an ongoing basis. And just also get your SMEs into a habit of thinking about their stuff and giving you ideas, not just once or twice a year in some project, but like throughout, right? 
and it keeps your team on track um, to deliver things as you go from one week to another. Yeah, and you can also, just to add on to what you said, do the voices and audience approach where you obviously identify some key voices within your group who may, who make all the noise, who talk about the stuff, but there's also the secondary group and their audience might be slightly different, so they can still push out the same messaging, but with their flavor. So you literally are not creating new, new content again, but you're pushing out the message to another audience in another, with a slightly different flavor. So you're basically saying the same thing, we're expanding your reach and thereby getting your message into people's minds, into the mindset, and also, you know, kind of like a nuclear reaction kind of process yeah. with different people just spreading the whole thing. So it, it helps build your reputation too. And th that's true. And if, uh, the the other thing I know I've, I've seen already is this this continuous production process. Yeah. Um, it's much, it decreases the, I don't know if it decreases the overall effort. I don't think that's true, but it sort of decreases the effort per content piece that goes out. I, yeah. I'd say that's true. Yeah. Um, and the other thing it does is since it's so regular and everybody knows, you know, Friday next week, we'll, we'll be sitting together again with the, I don't know, with our supply chain consulting group, right? And we wanted to talk about. I don't know what it is, the role of AI in, in mitigating supply chain risk. As you yeah. progress through your regular week to, to that meeting, your brain will inevitably do the work for you and just realize that, for example, there's content pieces out, you read something in a newspaper, the subject matter expert, you, he also knows he's going to be interviewed, right? They have conversation with the clients, they give them ideas. It's just, it facilitates the, 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 the process, the of the actual thinking about the content, right? And I think, Ash, it's the same for, for you and me with this podcast, yeah. right? We know every Friday there's going to be a recording. And yes, we have guest planned and that stuff. Okay, fine. But it forces us to think about our stuff and sort of clarify our own ideas around things. And that is a value in and by itself. If, if your business is consulting where you're, you know, get paid for Basically, your expertise is to, yeah. to build that. And you, you just don't get that same effect if you do a three month project thought leadership and then you build it all like you try to build it all at once there's no iterating on stuff there's no intermittent feedback yeah. there's no refining things as you go along it's just one major big cannonball fired and then you know maybe it helps maybe it doesn't so i'm with you on that but interestingly flo i believe for once we managed to cover the entire depth of this topic in a very <laughs> succinct manner which is um, kind of amazing for the, the two of us yeah, I don't know. I can I can try to 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 recap or wrap up. If, you know, yeah, if yeah. Let's do so a I recap. think we said okay. Step one: if you have a marketing plan, chances are it's not detailed enough, right? You got to be more specific. So your suggestion was sit down, build a skeleton calendar, like really understand what's going to happen in the year, mm -hmm. and start thinking about uh, planned reactive content for some of the highlight moments you you might see. I mean, yeah. Let's let's do it two ways. One, you have your regular moments. Your re yeah. regular moments where you have like content that are done and the planned reactive for the unexpected things that come in. So those are the two things that you need to focus yeah. on. Yeah. And then and then B, or in addition to that, uh, start setting up start building a process or just set up a cadence, right? Where you meet mm -hmm. with your team to review that calendar, add to it, update stuff, right? And and just get in the habit of asking yourself what could be our planned reactive for a given month. Just do that more regularly. And then Finally, if, if you have a topic, right, if you know Q1 is going to be our supply chain quarter, make sure you get a cadence going that it's not dissimilar to podcast production, right, where every week, every yep. two weeks, you interview the experts, you capture what's being said, preferably on video, right? So you have everything, your video, your audio, yes. and so forth. And then you turn around and you you that is what becomes the source material for, I don't know, your blog posts, your LinkedIn posts. Yeah, all, for your all content. Kinds of stuff. Yeah. Because that is really, and, and I, I think it, I just wanted to repeat it. Have I said this already? I don't know. This is really the, this is where so many of the firms could win big time. Yeah. Is to increase their, their reach and their impact just by increasing the frequency. There's, there's so many consulting firms out there who, if you scroll through their social feeds, they post like once a week, sometimes, sometimes twice a month or something. Right. Yeah. Um, and if it, you can get a process the, going that that takes that number up to twice a week, three times a week, maybe, God forbid, once every day, that alone gives you so much more mileage in terms of in terms of reach and, and results. Um, 
period. Yeah. That's an easy, and, that's an easy win, right? Yeah, for sure. And remember that the less you actually talk in the market, the less people are aware of you. So you have to, this helps you maintain that continuous conversation that you need to, so that especially in consulting firms where it's all about clients and relationships, you actually manage to hold on to that. Yeah. So I had this conversation yesterday with with, um, with someone else that there should be some interesting idea to build a KPI that sort of uh, puts into relation the number of like we 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 discussed this that there's just firms mm-hmm. out there who do rebranding exercises or relaunch websites right yeah somewhat frequently but they never there's never any consistency or frequency to how often they speak to the market right mm-hmm. and and if you if you <laughs> I don't know, yeah. <laughs> divide the number of website relaunches you've done by the number of by the number of webinars you've given, right? And 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 if it's like some the relationship is not it's not great, right? Like the the point being, you should invest much more time in speaking to the market every day mm-hmm. than I don't know, changing your fonts and logos and stuff like that's because that that's not helping. It's better to get the production process going with the old stuff or the things you already have. And mm-hmm. to endlessly tweak your base materials. Yeah. That's it. That's all I had. That's, that's no, that's that's it. It's a, it's a wrap, I guess. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll say this. If, if someone has a splendid production process working, which they're very proud of, then I'd like to hear from them. My guess would be maybe Nilima has one for the magazine, right? But that, that's, that doesn't <laughs> that's count, right? Awesome. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm thinking much more smaller teams, uh, maybe more social than than you know big ticket. Actually, magazine. reach out to us. Yeah, reach out to us. Maybe you could be a guest for us. Yeah, we'd love to hear it. Mm-hmm. Cool. Then I'd say that's it for today. I'm gonna gonna stop the recording here. Ash, have a nice weekend. Eventually, again. Yeah. Thanks for listening to Unbillable Hours. If you want more, tune in next week. You know where to find us.